Hey, this is Joe from Personas. In this video, I'm going to show you a couple of things you might have missed on the start page in Studio One. A lot of software that you use, when you first open it, it tends to give you either a template chooser, like let's create a new document, or a recent files list. Studio One gives you a lot more than that, but you may have only ever noticed this recent files list. There's a lot of cool stuff here you might have missed, so let's dive into it really quickly. First up, let's talk about that recent files list. As you can see, it's showing me the most recent files that I opened, and it actually goes back a long ways. We've got one here that I opened two years ago. Now, these are just the ones that I opened most recently. However, if you work on a lot of files in a given day, let's say you've got a workflow where you're working on a bunch of different client files, you have 20 or 30 files that you opened up just since yesterday. This list starts to get pretty long. If there are a few files you always go back to and you wanna be able to spot them more quickly, you can actually pin them by hovering your mouse over on the left-hand side here and just click to create a pin. It doesn't move the order, so you can still see things in the order that you most recently opened it, but as you're scrolling, you get this little visual indicator. It's kind of like highlighting that particular song and say, ah, here's that one I've been looking for. Ah, here's that one, things like that. So for me, I'm doing save as a lot, taking a song I worked on, save as to create a song for a video I'm working on, but I want to get back to that original one. I could pin that and be able to find that quickly. Now, there's one feature I didn't notice for an embarrassingly long time, and it's this search feature. Look, there's a little magnifying glass right here. If we click on it, we can search within each of these tabs. Now, it's important to know, recent files, self-explanatory. Songs is literally looking at the songs folder that's created inside your Studio One folder. If you're not sure where that is, open up your preferences, come to locations. This is where those folders reside. So there's a folder for songs, for projects, for shows, for presets, etc. That defaults to being on your system hard drive, but you can put it anywhere. I have mine on my external drive, so if I grab that, go to another computer, I've got all my files there ready to go. Um, and this is searching within those folders. So if I'm looking for a version of my song Fighter that I created, I can search Fighter. And I can see, okay, there's two versions here. If I come into recent files, I can see there's like oh, 15 or so recent versions of Fighter that I've created where I've done a save as to create different ones. So instead of scrolling this big long list looking for that particular version, I can just start typing in some of the letters and then I can get to it a lot faster. All right, moving along in this middle section, you'll notice there's an artist profile and a SoundCloud section. SoundCloud is really self-explanatory. If you have a SoundCloud account, you can log in and then it will be tied to your Studio One account, which means you can upload your mix directly to your SoundCloud account from Studio One. That's very cool. Artist profile. This is actually something I've neglected setting up. If we click on that little, those little three dots and just type in headshot here, I can now have, oh, it's going to automatically resize that for me. Thanks, Studio One. Bam! I can have my smiling face in my last studio here. And I can even say genre. Let's call it folk rock. I don't know. That seems right. Website. I can even put that there. And now, when I open a new song, let's check it out. This is, this is what this is. Aside from looking pretty cool, and now I'm a little cooler like Gregor when I open up my session, you can see that. I make a new song called Cool New Song, y'all. And check it out. When I come to der, der, der song information, look. It's got my face. It's got my name. It's got my website. And it's got the year. And is there anything else? And yeah, if I open it up further, I can see it's folk rock, blah, blah, blah. So if it, this is specifically for you as an artist. If you are working on your own music all the time, this is great because now that's all embedded into the song. And I believe if I export this as an MP3, my face is on that as well. I'm not sure about that, but who cares? Um, you can always change that later. That's very cool. Now, this setup section, this is really handy. This is where you can choose which audio interface you want to get to. It's just a, it's just a shortcut for getting to this section of the preferences window. Um, you can configure audio devices. That's the same thing. Configure external devices, so things like... Hardware controllers, MIDI controllers, things like that. You can get to that very quickly. And one of the biggest ones is check for updates. If there's a new update in Studio One, a lot of times there's this message up here with a green button to update. But if you ignored that or clicked it to go away, but then you thought, wait, is there an update? You can come here, click check for updates, and it will check for you right there. This right-hand side, you've seen the news feed. This is where we post things like mine and Gregor's and other folks' latest videos, any special news about Studio One, updates, things like that. However, you may not have known this demos and tutorial section is here. Now, if you open this and it's blank, there should be a link for installing this. This is something you have to install when you set up Studio One. So Studio One, installation, 
uh, Studio One demos and tutorials. You want to check that and click install, and it will download these sessions for you. But then you've got uh, things like this MAV session, which has a ton of really cool uh, programming. It's just an entire session of this song that you've heard. Gregor's used it before in some of his videos, uh, and it allows you to open it up, check it out. We got this artist information, links to the Spotify page, like. It's this is what those artist sections are good for, and we can come in, we can hit play, and listen to the awesomeness. Push me away. And it's a very cool way to see. Okay, how do people set up sessions in Studio One? This is very cool and something that a lot of people might have missed. So it's right there, waiting for you with your Studio One account. And we have links to our social pages here. So you may have known all of this. If not, I hope I opened your eyes to something here that you're not using that you want to incorporate into your workflow. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.